Ladies and gentlemen, hey, hi, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. When it comes to the overall Warzone 2 meta right now, obviously we've got plenty of different guns in the past couple of days. We've covered a lot of the top tier options for close range, long range, everything else in between. But when it comes to your exact weapon setups, your meta loadouts, right? There's still a lot of confusion I see in certain areas regarding what is the correct way to attack certain areas. In this video, we're focusing mainly on control, but there's a few little side notes to pay attention to as well. And the reason that this is even a conversation to begin with is mainly because of the lack of transparency in game, right? When it comes to the actual loadout menu, when you go through and you try to build your gun and you put on this barrel and this rear grip and this under barrel and this stock, you're gonna get the certain pros and cons list and it'll say plus sprint speed, plus recoil control, plus stability. But then in game, it might do something entirely different. We've known for some time that the little bars that they use to accurately, accurately describe uh, how much something is increasing or being decreased are completely wrong. And the descriptions oftentimes are completely wrong and we are going to sort of exemplify that here today because we are on sim.gg which takes the raw data mine stats of every single weapon and every single attachment puts them up on the site so we can actually see them laid out and since the last time we've had a conversation similar to this they've gone through and updated a lot to make the attachment breakdown even more specific so there's a couple of different examples I want to take a look at here featuring the Razorback the Rowl and then also the Lockman sub with a few ways that essentially the game is kind of lying to you in a way, right? So initially here, the main premise of this conversation, what's right and what's wrong when you're trying to build a certain loadout for control, obviously for the mid to long range, the two areas you're probably going to look to the most are under barrels and rear grips. Now, why is this? Obviously the under barrels have plenty of different options. You can see with uh, view kick increases, with gun kick increases, horizontal and vertical, all sorts of stuff like that. And we've got tons and tons of choices, some specific ones, Proto, Hex, and whatnot, some of these newer ones that are uh, here as well, also very useful, but those are pretty standard, pretty straightforward. We'll talk some details here in just a moment. The other option though, like I said, rear grips. And this is because basically every single weapon in the game or nearly every single weapon in the game has a rear grip that is dedicated towards recoil control. Usually it's one or two for sprint to fire, one for recoil control. So in this case, it's the ERGX one. It's obviously gonna be named different depending on the weapon, but it is straightforward enough that it says plus recoil control and you can see in this case you're getting a view kick vertical uh you know increase there seven percent to be exact for the uh, uh, vertical and horizontal view kick so your weapon's not going to kick as much when you're shooting and the gun kick itself the actual pattern also being decreased by seven percent however when you run this the cons are that your uh gun bob with uh its actual bounce is going to be a little bit worse and the idle sway as it's standing there and you're adsing and it's sort of moving back and forth that's also going to be a little bit worse but you might look at this and say okay i need to attack recoil control i need easier recoil and i'll go ahead and use this rear grip because it says plus recoil control and it's going to do that however this is where things get tricky because there's also several under barrels here that have very similar pros if not more pros and they say plus recoil control now, sometimes it's phrased differently. Sometimes it's plus recoil control. Sometimes it's plus steadiness. Sometimes it's plus stability. And that's where things get even more complicated with the underbarrels because now you have different types of underbarrels doing different types of things. For instance, a lot of these smaller uh, foregrips and whatnot, things like the Grave Digger and the uh, Edge 47 and even the Ripper 56, these are what you guys see me use on a lot of mid to long range weapons. And why is that? Well, if I go ahead and hide the face cam, you can see there's a very lengthy list of pros for this on the Ripper 56. For example, it is going to be hurting your movement speed a tad bit and your ADS time a tad bit, but it's going to give you the vertical and uh, horizontal view kick and gun kick increases. However, you can see behind the face cam there, you're also getting better sway. It's going to be uh, more stable over range. You're not going to have that random sort of movement there back and forth as you're ADSing. You look at something like the edge and it's essentially the same thing just scaled down this has less pros it's not doing as much for you but it's also not gonna hurt you as much hence why you can sign it, uh, sort of scale that depending on a weapon's level of difficulty if it's got a lot of sway or a lot of recoil you might want to go for ripper if it doesn't have much you could go for edge and still get a nice little benefit out of that so straight up there are certain grips that they're going to be doing different things. So you might see plus, you know, recoil control on Ripper and say, OK, is this better than my rear grip? And in a way, it's not doing as much for your physical control, but it's going to do more for your recoil pattern to make the gun easier to use. 
but then you can also just look straight up at other under barrels for instance a lot of the four grips here like lock grip precision merc grip tango and whatnot you might look at these and say okay these also say plus recoil steadiness or plus recoil control is there a difference actually yes for instance lock grip precision here once more if i go ahead and hide the face cam so you guys can see all the stats doing about the same penalty for ads as the ripper would be but in this case it's actually helping even more with your uh gun kick and your view kick it's a nine percent increase there to make it even easier while also having minimal movement cons uh really good gun bob as well it's helping out some there but it doesn't help out with the sway at all so that's uh, sort of approaching a completely different type of control this is really targeting actual recoil control and that pattern itself whereas these other under barrels like like I said ripper or edge or whatnot commando even those are attacking some control but sway as well so it's important to know what you're trying to go after when you're looking at straight up just recoil control, right? And the RAL, I feel like, exemplifies this really well. This is a weapon that has a ton of recoil. If you look at the rear grips, step 40, it'll give you 10% view kick horizontal and vertical. It'll give you 7% gun kick uh, each direction as well. It's going to hurt that idle sway, though. So if you were trying to just pick and choose between step 40 and, say, the Dune, you'd see Dune, yeah, it's going to hurt your ADS, whereas, you know, obviously the step 40 would not. But... With that ADS penalty, you're also getting even more view kick, even more gun kick, added idle sway, and better gun bob as well. So the penalties there, a little bit more, not huge, but a little bit more. But for the payoff, you're getting a lot more out of this. Now that said, you could always stack the two and really capitalize, but you might not always have that situation. So really be aware of what a given attachment is doing because while they share similar pros and could have very similar wording sometimes even the exact same description they're not always going to do the same thing and by the way as we're going through this quick reminder if you are new here every single day i got you covered with all the details everything you need to know about mw2 warzone 2 and dmz so feel free to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date and if you guys enjoy this video or if you find it helpful let me know by dropping a like on it also big shout out to my friends over at gamer advantage you guys might have heard that right now the brand new who's immortal times gamer advantage bundle is out this comes with an actual engraved little lens there's a nice little tiger claw scratch on the lens sort of adding some customization to the inferno frames but then for the accessory kit you could also get your own who's immortal cleaning cloth there's some stickers included in there really cool stuff i love how it turned out if you want to grab any of that the actual uh glasses bundle or just the accessory kit throwing code immortal at checkout and get yourself a nice little discount there link for that will be down in the description below now another little side note that i wanted to touch on here is obviously we've gone through the under barrels we've gone through the rear grips in depth there but this is something that is the case in a lot of ways and by this i mean the inaccuracies the game saying something is happening and it not happening recently this is one that players have been talking about a lot the mp5 stocks especially on like my builds i've been using the mirror recoil for some time and what it says it does in game is really not what you're getting in game which is really strange and this is kind of the case a lot here for instance the mirror recoil stock is supposed to help with control and sprint speed but if you uh, go through and actually look at the stats you'll notice it actually hurts your tack sprint a little bit and even your ads strafe while adding one millisecond worse ads time and then as far as its control goes initially you might just see it's adding one percent to your uh, view kick and your gun kick however it is also going to curiously enough end up helping with the sway and the gun bob as well so obviously the descriptions of what the attachment does in game not exactly what's going on with the real stats same thing with the mobile stock you hear that mobile stock okay i must be getting faster well it helps your ads time but you can see it actually ends up hurting your tax sprint time and your ads strafe even more than the recoil stock does which is really strange while still helping out some with idle sway you look at the stock list or the no stock option it hurts your idle sway and whatnot a lot it also kills your control but that's where you're actually getting mobility from which would make more sense but the penalties here much more severe than what you might see uh elsewhere so this is a common occurrence this is a common theme with basically all the attachments I think I've highlighted the main ones that I think most players will run into here but the game just straight up still is not accurate so when you are building your loadouts definitely pay attention to what type of attachment you are using uh, specifically when it comes to the under barrels and definitely try and like value that versus something else am I replacing 
a rear grip with an underbarrel or vice versa am i stacking them to get the ultimate control stats there am i using the correct stock or is this game straight up lying to me in this case it's definitely worth referencing the actual stats here when you can to really optimize your build and of course whenever i'm talking top 10 loadouts you know best weapon for this best weapon for that i'm always giving you guys the most optimal build so those are tried and tested in game for that overall efficiency while also fact checking with all the stats here as well so we got those to you know rely on if you need but it's actually crazy that the game is still this uh you know wrong in certain areas right the transparency definitely could be improved and should be improved anyways before i go off on a rant that being said that is gonna wrap things up for this one if you guys enjoyed the video let me know by dropping a like on it and if you're new here feel free to hit that subscribe button turn on those post notifications to always stay up to date with mw2 warzone 2 and dmz but once again, thank you so much for tuning in. And until next time, take it easy, have an awesome rest of your day, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.